In the middle of a dimly lit exhibition hall in suburban Washington, D.C., a dissected human body lies inside a glass case. Around it, visitors gaze. They do not cringe in horror or disgust. They do not gasp in shock. They just examine it with keen interest. This skinless specimen could be them. This and the rest of the rubberized mummies exhibited here help people understand how a human body functions from inside out. Each body showcases different bodily functions, maladies and injuries. The sinewy muscles of this male cadaver are cut open in places such as the lower back and the legs to show metal prosthesis after an injury. Sam, an out-of-town visitor at the museum, can relate. He has the same metal plates in his arms. I've got two steel plates and 15 screws here, and then I've separated both of my elbows. I've dislocated both of my elbows, and I've got an, another plate and six screws. I've got 21 screws and three plates here, and I've got two little screws in this elbow. And you know, I never got to see that, just, just an x-rays. Really, that's all, we, that's all anyone ever gets to see is just pictures in a book until you can actually see the plates and the screws in the body. Another visitor, Elaine Potowski, is a pharmacist. She observes the spinal fusion of the cadaver. The 15-year-old son underwent the same surgery a year ago. It's a little unnerving. I mean, it's cool on the one hand, but it is a little bit unnerving knowing that that's inside of my son. But I've seen it through the x-rays, so it's actually kind of interesting to see it on this body. Others, like 18-year-old Caitlin, a biology student, consider these bodies virtual medical textbooks. We're learning about the body systems and how it works, and it's just neat to actually see it and see how the process works and, um, you know, see the bodies. Visitors also have the chance to touch a human brain and a human heart. Both organs, like the rest of the specimens at the exhibition, have been through the polymer process. It is a revolutionary technique that uses silicon rubber to preserve human tissues. An exhibit expert says the brain is the most difficult organ to preserve. A brain actually would be spongier and feel almost like you, you couldn't go like this with an actual you know, brain. It would be more fluid and um, kind of the texture of oat, oatmeal, <laughs> spongy like oatmeal. But the process gives it that you know, the feeling of a plastic polymer, of silicone polymer, which is exactly what is in the cell now, instead of the body fluid. The heart looks a heart? bit like yeah. the traditional heart we draw on this paper. Is a human heart. It is. This is right atrium, right ventricle. So it would be like that. One of the most famous exhibits is a set of blackened, shrunken lungs of a heavy smoker. Next to them is a set of a non smoker's white, healthy lungs. The difference between the two is so stark that according to exhibit spokesmen, many visitors who smoked till that day gave up smoking on the spot. The exhibition showcases other parts of the body and body functions. There are areas dedicated to the nervous system, the reproductive system, the skeletal system, and skin. These cadavers belong to people who died of natural causes. Some died just five years ago. Others have been preserved since the 70s. Their bodies were donated for medical research and obtained legally through the Dalian Medical University Plastination Laboratories in the People's Republic of China. The exhibition has generated some negative reaction from groups that say human bodies should not be displayed as exhibits. Others do not regard it as controversial. I think it's great. I, I think people who have donated their body for medical science so that other people can learn is a wonderful, wonderful thing because we can't learn how to cure new diseases and things if you don't understand the way the body is put together. Bodies, the exhibition, will stay in Washington, D.C. until October. Then it will go on tour to other American and European metropolitan areas. Penelope Pulu, VOA News.